Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Get Growing Weekly Work Session. We're uh, very glad you're here today and have joined us. Uh, Coach Ashley is busy today adjusting to some new locations, so uh, she's not going to be joining us today. So I've got a, a few things to be covering here, and we have a very special guest with us today, uh, Megan, who will be um, talking about an acuity integration a little bit um, in a few minutes. So uh, yeah, just as you're rolling in here, it's good to see the, the numbers increasing as people are, are rolling in here. So um, we're, we're happy you're joining us today. So yeah, I guess uh, let's everyone maybe say hello. Uh, anyone want to say hello and welcome our audience here? I'll jump in and say hello first because I like to be first with things. Uh, <laughs> how's everybody doing? I'm, uh, I'm sure you've seen my name pop up in the inbox a couple of times. But for those of you that don't know me, I'm a my name is Colin. I am the token Canadian on the team. Um, I don't really have anything else to say other than, actually, have you seen my new mug? It looks just like me. <laughs> my wife actually bought this for me last week and she was like, you have to bring this up on the weekly work session calls because the same glasses, it's kind of the same haircut and he has big long ears like you. So yeah, anyways, that's, that's all. Hello. <laughs> That's awesome, Colin. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Amanda, and um, uh, I am a um, help in the uh, customer service, and um, I am also the co-founder. Uh, would like to welcome you all today, and welcome Jill uh, from Spokane. Good morning, guys. It's been a little while since I've been able to make it to a weekly work session, so I'm really excited that I get to be here with you guys. I'm in the customer inbox helping you guys with your questions on our system. Um, otherwise, it'll be fun to see some stuff Greg has to talk about and listen to our guest today. I'm excited. Welcome, everybody. Hello, everyone. Jessica here. I'm also in the support tickets, and I am just thrilled to be here again. It has been a while for me, too, and I'm just excited to hear what Megan has to share with us. Awesome. Sounds good. So, yeah, I'll, I'll start off here with, um, I'll show, you know, last time I think I landed with the weekly work session with a bit of a cliffhanger. I got some new stuff, so I want to come over, uh, go sh uh, share that here quick. Let me share my screen. We'll start with that. That fun stuff, and then we'll get into um, what you might have come here for, which is to see Megan's um, cool approach for you know integrating Acuity. So uh, yeah, so the just diving into this right away. The well, before I do this, just stepping back one second. So we're gonna I'm gonna come uh, cover the uh, new features here. Megan will go over her part. She'll share her screen and show what she's got. And then we'll have an open Q&A session. So basically, if you've got tech questions, whatever, go ahead, load them up in the Q&A. Um, try not to put them in the chat if you can. Sometimes they get lost as, you know, as people comment in the chat. It, it does scroll by kind of fast sometimes. So if you have questions you want us to cover, put them in the Q&A. We'll do our best to get to them uh, during our, our hour here. So um, yeah, so with that, I'll, I'll hop into the new features. So generally, the theme of what I'll be covering today is some we've, um, you know, as people have deepen their personal branding strategies we've encountered a few places in the system that could use improvement uh, and for more personalization and so there's been a few different areas some of these bigger requests than others um, so for example now there's like a and i'll show you where to get to these most of these are just on the premium and higher plans although there is now an also an add-on to add these to your if you have a basic plan too so i'll cover that in in more detail but now there's a custom email footer um, some people had mentioned that, hey, if it has from Get Oiling on the bottom of all my emails, it kind of blows my cover a little bit, you know, if I'm hiding, hiding that. So now there's a customizable email footer. Um, there's also uh, some improvements when people are clicking to read an email online. There's uh, a now the color picker also has your uh, brand colors in it. And there's now like editable button colors and styles. So I'm going to cover each of those. They're all kind of exciting. And again, most of these are on the premium and higher plan. There's also an add-on for basic. So I'll start with the email footer. This has been a big one. Under customize my site here in the menu on the left, there, if you scroll to the bottom, there's an advanced section. Um, and for those of you who haven't seen it here, if you're on premium or higher, I believe there's a section here for Google fonts as well. 
if you expand advanced, uh, not only is there a custom section you can add to your website, but down here is a new field for the custom email footer. So what this does, and I don't have an email in front of me, I should have brought one up, but at the very bottom of every email that is sent out of, out of Get Oiling, there's a little line that says, sent on behalf of, and then it's got like your name and uh, you know, some, other, some other things via Get Oiling. That's replacing this line. So whatever you put in here is going to uh, replace that line. You can t I would recommend testing it out. Put something in here, test it out, make sure it looks like what you want um, before you send your first bulk email or something. The unsubscribe links is still gonna be there. That's, you know, that's a requirement for the uh, laws that are out there. And uh, one note that uh, has recently come up or has become a little more prominent. There is, uh, you know, this is a US law, but it's generally probably a good idea, good practice, you know, for any marketing email. There is this US law called can spam that does require that you have a physical mailing address. If you don't put that in here, there's not gonna be a physical mailing address on there. So you wanna make sure that you put that in here to maintain compliance with this as well. So, but it does let you personalize it. The big benefit here is now you can completely hide the get oiling part of it. Um, that's not gonna appear in the bottom of any emails anymore if you have this enabled. Um, and that's been a big request for pe from people. So yay for this one. Um, related to that, most of the emails, or I guess it's the campaign emails that are sent out of the system, they do have uh, a link that says read the, or click here to read this online previously. And I don't have a demo link for this, but previously it, it would show, I think, the little independent distributor logo at the top, which was another giveaway. So we got rid of that as well. So anyone who's happened to click through uh, on an email that for the read online, or if they if you send a campaign via text message, in some cases that would appear. So another little improvement there. And that, that, that actually changed uh, for all the plans when you click through to read that online. Um, another fun one here is the custom colors now. So the, this button, it's under my site settings. And I come over here to this custom colors and fonts. This button is available on premium and higher. And I, as I mentioned, there's an add-on for basic. Uh, if you'd like this on your basic plan, we can now add that on without having to upgrade to premium. Um, so click, and you can just contact us if you'd like that. But if you click on this custom colors and fonts area, you know, we do have a few presets here as well. Um, this is pretty much the same as it was before. For those of you who are familiar with the screen, I think these button or these color swatches are a little bit bigger to, you know, have a better sense of the color so you don't have to squint so much, but um, you can choose these colors. And now all these colors actually will show up in the editor as well. So like, if you know, pay attention to these colors here, you know, we've got this yellow and blue. Now, if I go like, for example, to click over to blog post to write a new blog post, and I'm just pulling one of these editors up. If you open up the text color, now there's more choices in here. Previously, it was like a list of what was there before, or, you know, there was like a predefined list of colors and no matter what, now those colors, you can see here's that blue and the yellow and all the other ones here do show up as well as some of the button colors, I believe show up in this palette as well. If you don't see quite as many colors, it means you haven't gone in there and customized it yet. Um, it will just show the, the uh, smaller palette if you haven't done that. But once you do, then all your custom colors show up in here. So this is great for applying branding and colors inside, um, you know, if you're writing a blog post or sending an email, this is a fantastic way to, um, you know, can maintain that consistent brand color uh, that you have in there too. So that's uh, a fun, a fun change there. So looking at my next item here, that's also under that custom colors. Uh, so under my site settings again, and the custom colors and fonts down here, there's now on the bottom, uh, you can edit your button colors and styles. And as you can see, you can do some interesting things in this little demo account. I made some several different varieties of buttons. Um, all you have to do is click on them and then play around with all the settings here. You know, you can, you can change the rounded corners um, to your liking. You can capitalize the letters, add a drop shadow, change the name of the button to whatever you want to, uh, my button. Um, you know, cause then obviously if it, then you can name it after the color or maybe the purpose, like, hey, this is my primary button or whatever. You can change the colors however you'd like. Uh, and those will all, you know, you can play around with these and border width and colors and all that. So all these colors actually will show up in that color picker as well when you're adding a new color. So all of these become essentially your brand colors and you can change these. There is one button called default that is like the default button throughout the site. So that's, this one does change a lot. Uh, most of these don't change quite, quite as many, but, but yeah, that adds another level of personalization and customization. Just make sure to save your changes when you're done. Um, so, so yeah. And so if you're interested in 
in adding that, or if you're on the premium or higher plan, you already have access to this, just go ahead and enjoy it, um, play around with it if you'd like. Um, if you're on the basic plan uh, and you don't need all the features of premium, by all means, uh, you know, email us, we can get you some pricing on that and then um, decide whether or not to, to add that to your account. So yeah, so th that's the quick roundup of new features. And at this point, um, I'd like to introduce you to Megan here. If you want to, uh, Megan has a really nice way of integrating Acuity with the Git Oiling Zoom, and she's here today to show, I guess, what she's what she's done there. So, Megan, if you want to introduce yourself, say hello, and then um, go ahead and share your screen and show us what we've got. Sure. Um, so, hi, I'm Megan. I am also Canadian, so Colin, I was very excited. <laughs> We just, we, we attract each other. We can't help it. <laughs> like, oh, Canadian. Um, okay, so I do all things Martha Krejci, <laughs> huge, huge fan. And um, so I've been learning about Acuity. Um, I am in love with Get Oiling. Um, I will recommend it to everyone. Whether you're in Young Living or not, <laughs> I recommend Get Oiling because it's phenomenal. And if I can figure out how to use it, then honestly, anyone can. So um, when it came to Acuity and me uh, scheduling um, just appointments with my clients, I couldn't use the Zoom account that came with Get Oiling because you have to be able to log into it outside of Acuity. And, um, and so I went back and forth with them and with Greg and we couldn't figure it out. And I didn't want to have to pay for another Zoom account because I already had one. Um, and I wanted it to be better than the free one because I need more than 40 minutes for my appointments. So I figured out a workaround. Um, it's really simple. It just, it took me a while to figure out. Um, so then I let Greg know and he was like, hey, you want to come show people? And I was like, sure. So that's me. I will share my screen. So. Okay. Okay. So I'm also going to just turn off my video just because my internet is not always great. Okay. So this is my Acuity um, page. And all I've done is whenever you set up an appointment, um, so you would go down to appointment type and um, just set something up, whether it's for an hour or however long you want, that's fine. Um, and then what happens is you will have an automatic email that will go out to your client to let them know um, that the appointment's been booked. And so normally the email would say um, when it is and what it is and where it is. But if you can't integrate Zoom, then the, we uh, the where will be blank. And so I was having to manually um, tell people what the Zoom link was for all of their um, appointments and it was getting a little tedious and kind of annoying. Um, so all I did was uh, I went over to Get Oiling and um, went down to Zoom meetings and I just created, uh, this is the one that I use, for um, my AFT sessions. So I just created a recurring Zoom um, class or link or whatever. Um, and then I went and took, I just copied the meeting link. And then I went back over to Acuity into my email settings. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> almost freaked out. Okay, and so um, this is the initial confirmation email that people will get. So you can see what it looks like. Um, and so you see it says what, when, and it just automatically fills in based on what you've put. The where is normally blank. So all I did was insert the Zoom link that I just copied from Get Oiling, and then went back and grabbed the meeting ID and the password and then popped it in here and, uh, and then clicked save. <laughs> that was it. And then also you wanna do the same thing over in reminders because they will get a reminder email. I have it set for an hour before the appointment. Um, and if you don't put the Zoom link in there as well, then when they get the reminder email, they're not gonna see 
um, that it's just going to be blank. And if they made the appointment like three weeks ago, they're probably not going to go back and remember where that email was. So it's just easier if you pop it into the reminder as well. And um, so then you can just use uh, either the same link for all of your appointments or just create different ones. Like if I do a group session for people, then I'll create their own link and I'll just pop it in here. So that is honestly it. Um, it's, it's really not complicated at all, but if you, you know, don't think about it, then it can be a little uh, frustrating to try and uh, force it to work. Um, so it's just a really simple workaround. So I hope that was helpful. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, one question. Do you also like, I know there's options for like the waiting room. Did uh, do yes. you do anything with that as well when you're setting up the meeting? Yes, I, I have um, the enable waiting room um, just because I use it for one on one. So if someone else like tries to jump in, then they can't. Um, so I personally love the waiting room. Um, and I use it for mostly all of my appointments. Um, mm -hmm. And I love that you can just customize everything over here and get away. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's awesome. So right in that, in that case, like, you know, if you're wondering why, you know, why reuse the same link, there, you know, it's secure or whatever, anyone can get mm -hmm. in while the waiting room basically, I think prevents that, right? So you have a list, yep. somebody joins, you see a pop up or something like that, and then you can let them in or not. So yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And whenever my meeting is about to start, I just come back to get oiling and I just click on start meeting. So it's really simple. And I don't have to think about, you know, sending the link to uh, people because it was getting, you know, if I sent them an email and they didn't get it or I'm looking them up on Facebook, it was just, it's so much easier <laughs> if they just get the email automatically. Yeah, that's fantastic. So cool. Well, thanks yeah. for sharing uh, that with us. I don't, I'm just no glancing through our Q&A. Uh, looks like we have a couple of, uh, we have a few questions related to that while you're on here. So Dana okay. asks, does this work with multiple unique clients? I think the answer is yes, but you can go ahead. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it doesn't really matter who the client is. Like you can just set up, you know, a recurring meeting and just use the same link for different clients. Um, which is what I do. If you want to have a different um, session for every single client, you can do that in Acuity as well. Um, but I find this way is a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah, another question from Carrie. Does Acuity have a free trial option? Yes. Yes, they do. And they also have different levels. Um, I'm at the $25 a month level because I wanted to be able to have coupons and uh, packages because I offer uh, packages for more sessions being booked, um, but they have a cheaper one as well. And honestly, even $25 a month has been a no brainer for me. I love Acuity, it's so easy. And people have to pay for, if you're charging for sessions, they have to pay when they book. So then you avoid that awkward conversation of, so you need to pay me. <laughs> so I really <laughs> like being able to avoid that awkwardness. That really makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah. Bertha says that's fantastic. Thanks for sharing. I'm going to save so much time and people will not be forgotten. That's, that's awesome. Yep. Um, one other question looks like um, Krista says, do you also use acuity for payment? Oh, okay. You just covered that. Do you also use acuity for payments for your sessions? How's that integrated with your scheduling? Oh, so maybe this question, I don't know if there's, if there's more you want to cover on that, you know, by all means, but in our last part of the question, why did you choose this over, say, for example, Calendly and Stripe? Um, so, I, I mean, Stripe, Stripe is the, the payment um, service. So I do use Stripe with Get Oiling. Um, Calendly, I found incredibly frustrating to work with. Um, I had worked with it last year and it was, it was just annoying. It didn't really um, integrate well with all the things I was using. Whereas Acuity, I don't need to really integrate anything with it. I just use that. And then I create custom pages on um, my Get Oiling site and uh, people can click right on a graphic and um, be brought to my scheduler and then they can pick a time and uh, pay and book it. So it's really seamless. And I like things to be as easy as humanly possible. And so Acuity and Get Oiling for me is where it's at. That's awesome. Yeah, 
Uh, let's see here. So somebody has another question here. Jean says, in what circumstances do you charge for sessions? More of a strategic question, I guess, but what are your uh, thoughts well, there? Well, I mean, I'm AFT certified, so I charge for those kind of sessions. But if you're doing any kind of um, coaching, you know, coaching calls or uh, things like that, like I'll do group sessions for other people as well. And, and with that, with Acuity, you can set up a class and um and have a cost so you know my group sessions are 25 dollars for over 10 people so i can just set the class at 25 dollars and give people a link and they go right to it and they um they book it and they each pay individually um and i can set how many people i want to be allowed in the class um it's just it's really really well done and uh and easy to use and so, yeah, I mean, it, it depends on, on what it is you can charge for, but um, if you have a service that you're charging for, then I definitely recommend it, especially if it's, you know, you're booking a time to work with a person, then, um, then I would be charging for that. Mm -hmm. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, that yeah, makes sense. Uh, so a couple questions here related to this that I can probably answer here. Uh, Jana asked, Did, didn't Calendly have some sort of integration with Get Oiling a while back? We, we haven't. Um, however, I think the same strategy, if you're already a Calendly user, I think the same strategy would work. I'm not as familiar with Calendly. Uh, I assume they have some sort of settings where you can email the template that may only be on their paid plan, but I guess you're on, you know, you're on the paid plan here too with Acuity. Mm -hmm. um, Megan, so that, you know, that probably works. But I think the same strategy will work. Like you just set your outbound emails to have the same recurring meeting that has the waiting room set up on it. And then um, you're basically in control. You don't have to worry about setting up a different meeting link and you always know the same meeting. It's always the same meeting and not a new one every time too. So, um, so and then let's see another question here. Um, oh yeah, somebody asked, I've never heard of Acuity scheduling. Is that part of Get Away Link? It's not, it is a separate program. Um, it's a, you know, like, like Calendly or Acuity, and I think there's probably some others out there that I've heard people use. It is a, um, a scheduling service that allows people to basically, you give them a link, I think, and then um, they can click on it and see what times you're available and book an appointment with you, as well as, um, as Megan was mentioning, you can make it such that payment is required in order to book the appointment, so they have to pay up front, um, if that's you know kind of how you are uh, billing too. So I think it's um, it's separate, but I think it's you know got a lot of powerful features that work really well, especially in the way that uh, I can figure out how to integrate this. All right, let's see here. Um, Michelle asked, how do you integrate this with Git Oiling? Um, if you want to wa probably watch the replay, we did um, cover that part. And is there already another training to show how to take the client from scheduling to payment? Uh, I don't believe we have done anything. This is the first that we've done kind of like on a on a scheduling basis here too. So let's see. I think any other if there's any other questions for Megan here, I don't see any in the list. Um, but if there is, you know, certainly pop it in QA here quick, we can have her address those. Um, otherwise we can uh, move on to our general QA. Um, you know, we can there's some questions on a variety of different uh, different topics here. So yeah, okay, so it looks like I don't see any other questions in here. So yeah, we can probably, yeah, thanks Megan. I really appreciate you um, joining for the call. I mean, you can stay on if you want to or whatever if you wanna drop off, but it's uh, totally up to you. Um, we're super excited you joined us here today and yeah. yeah we'll thank you for to, having me. Yeah, for sure. So thanks for sharing this trick with everyone, I think. It, it looks pretty straightforward and <laughs> it's pretty simple. Um, yeah. But yeah, if anyone has any other acuity questions, um, I feel free to reach out to me on Facebook and uh, I can probably walk you through it because I've probably spent a long time figuring out how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Sounds good. All right. So yeah, let's, let's move over to our regular Q and a here then. Um, so I can start with the first, well, actually, Amanda, you were going to, Look at some of these questions. Um, uh, let me get my screen yeah. share going and get the questions. Okay. Go ahead. All right. So the first person asked, "Can you give the basis for how to set up my website to create tab drop-down categories?" Yes. Um, this would be the menu editor. So um, we have. Let's see. 
so that's under my site settings. So, and I think I think what uh, this question is referring to it's from anonymous attendees. So I don't know who you are, but I think what this is referring to is this menu in the upper right hand corner. This demo site only has one thing on it here, just this home page. Um, but I'll demo how this all works from the uh, how to set that up and how to create new top level menus. So, under my site settings here, there's a the site menu button here. So click on site menu. And here's where you can edit the menu. Now there's uh, at the very top, the terminology being used here. So there's a menu and a menu item. So the menu is this top piece that says like home. And you've probably seen like if you go to, um, like if I just go to one of the built-in website themes, for example, these would be considered menus, you know, menu headers, menus, and these are the items within the menu. So if we're going back over here to um, create this, you know, drop down or categories or whatever, that's where you can either add a menu, which adds another top level menu item. So I'll add another one here, maybe call this second menu item, super creative, I know. <laughs> you can optionally put in a link if you want to, open it in a new window. If you're an advanced user, you can come in here and hover over this little eye. There's some extra tips in there for how you would link off to specific pages by putting specific tags in there. But I'll just go ahead and add that uh, and I'll hit save. And now I'll come over here, actually I'll, I'll view again because I opened a different site, but now it should be updated. And you can see there's a second menu item over here. It doesn't do anything right now because I haven't linked it to anything and I haven't put any items in there. But now that I have that in there, let's say I wanna put something in that menu, just go ahead and click add menu item. And then you have your choice. There's a variety of different menu item types that you can have. Pages are quite popular. Um, especially for those building a custom site. You can um, create a website page and then link to that. So if I'll, you know, let's say I want to put my page and I'll call it all about lemon uh, and then I'll hit done and save and I'll show you, oops, actually, so I do need to, I didn't fill out something. So I'm going to add a menu item here, um, all about lemon and I'll put that under my second menu item, I believe. So I had accidentally put it under home. So I'm going to delete the one there. I wanted it to be under the second menu item. Um, so now that it's now that it's there, I'll save it in view and refresh over here, and it should come up now. And we'll have oops, there will be an all about lemon link, which will take me to a different page now, um, which will be all about that, which apparently is the same as the page that I was on. <laughs> Funny. So uh, yeah, I guess I did choose the same page. So anyway. So that's, that's generally how you do it. You can add other items in there by clicking add menu item. Let's say if I want to add uh, a link to the blog archive, I'll just call it blog, show it under the second menu item, hit done, and then save. Uh, and then if I come over here again, now there'll be a blog item in there. And I can click on that and that'll take me to my blog, um, which is again a demo site that's got some interesting stuff on it. So. So yeah, that's that's the basics of it. There is a help article here too. If you go down here in the um, little question mark icon and come up to search and type, for example, menu, there is a help article on customizing uh, the menu and changing the homepage, creating menu headers. And uh, we did create a little, re recently did add a little video training on how to create a custom homepage. That's a very common question as well if you want to completely replace the built-in theme. Um, yeah, what do we have uh, next here? Okay, Cornelia asks, it, hi, yes, I finally have my custom page published. Some of my graphics are out of um, dimensions. Can you give me a tip on that? Um, and then there's a link to her page if you want to go find that under the Q&A. Yeah, okay, let me see. I just copied that link. So let's go to your website here. Okay, um, I guess I'm trying to see what might be and maybe it's under mobile um this all looks really awesome here actually so maybe there's some i don't know Cornelia, if you could expand on that maybe i'll shrink this down and see if this actually does anything different see if anything is stretched uh, and maybe it's not this home page either this is all looking pretty good uh, but uh, so there is actually one uh, let's see here is she saying anything let me expand this back out. But there is a tip that I have about when you're editing um, images on a page, this does come up from time to time. Let me pull up the page editor under my site settings. There's one tip about images that can be quite helpful. 
So when you're editing a page, I'll go back to this lemon page, which actually apparently is about lime. <laughs> there's a, if you click on an image, there's a little change size button down here. If you click on that, and there's a number in say the height box. Um, I've seen this happen a lot because I think one of our, one of the page templates had this for a while before we removed it. There was something like 500 px in that box, and what that would do then on mobile, it would like make it tall but then squish it. Um, so if you're having trouble with your image proportions, one suggestion is to come in here and just delete everything out of the width and height box, and then hit update. You know, again, that's click on the image, click on change size, delete both out of width and height, uh, and then hit update and see if that helps. That can the numbers get in there like if you drag this little slider or this little dot. If I shrink that down and then now I go back into change size, you can see there's a number in there, and maybe that's okay. You'd have to play around with that on mobile, but you know sometimes if you get a number in one box or you know both boxes, it can stretch it out of proportion. Usually the easiest way is just reset it like that and then play around with it a little bit to see um, see how that works. Yeah, uh, what do we have next here? Okay, um, what if your mailing address is your home address? Can you list city and state or does it have to be the complete address to be in compliance? Uh, assuming you're talking about the custom footer here for the custom email footer, it, the law, I believe, so that we do link to it in the back office here and you can obviously read this on your own time because it's quite, long, but I do believe there, it does require a valid mailing address. Uh, it doesn't have to be your home address. I know there's some services that for a few dollars a month, you can get a PO box, a virtual PO box, um, because they're probably hard, you know, they'll, if you do happen to get a piece of mail, they'll the mail there, they'll just scan it and uh, send it to you by email. So that's an option if you want to do that, but it does have to be a valid mailing address um, according to that. So if you want to dig through the can spam link, if you're in the US and and read up on that. Um, yeah. Okay, Mary asks, I would like to send my September Girl Workspace newsletter and include an invitation to the member vault. Can you show the steps to include a link to the member vault? Yeah, so in that case, like in the email itself, you would include a link um, to a landing page, assuming that you want them to get into a specific vault, like the member vault. And you want to create a landing page. So, you know, you can do this here or through custom pages, either click on landing pages here and create a new one, or uh, you can do the same thing with custom pages. Either way, you can create a new one. I'll just pick one of these here. You know, say like, hey, my, this, my member area, get into my member area or something. Whatever, you can you know, customize the site accordingly, but the real key is to come up under settings and then page settings here. And then, I mean, you can customize this. You can give them a thank you. Um, in this case, to let the people into a member area, I would say you'd want to choose, there is a campaign called no campaign here, which I'll pick, which is down here. So choose no campaign on the landing page if you're getting people into a, a member area. I mean, you can put one on there, but this will reduce the number of duplicate emails because the vault itself will also send a campaign. So no campaign and then choose the vault that you wanna let people into, which would be in this case, it'd be your member area or your uh, members vault. And then when you save it, then when people, you would include the link to the landing page, which you can get from either clicking view here. I, I haven't saved it, so it's not gonna let me do that. Or if I come back over here, um, there's a view link here. I'll just view one of these existing ones. So you basically grab this, uh, this URL here, copy it, and then go ahead and put that into your email that you're sending out to people. Uh, and then, so what'll happen is I'll read your September newsletter. They'll click the link to the member vault. It will pop up the page that says, hey, you know, whatever that you wanna put in there, fill out this form to get access to my member vault. And then they will get an email back with a link to actually set up their password. So it goes back and forth a little bit, but then you know that it's a, a valid email address and, and that people, you know, a real person wants in. So yeah, that's how you would do that. Okay, is there a way to remove certain sections of a custom page for mobile re for mobile viewing? Um, not right now, but that's actually a really interesting idea. Um, yeah, the, the page editor doesn't, I mean, it's got some, hmm, that might be something to add to our wish list. It's got a, uh, you know, there, there's a section editor, like 
sort of this section background where you can do stuff to it, but we don't have a hide section at the moment. So, but it's a great idea. I think I'll add that to the, the wish list after the call here. <laughs> okay, Dana asked, if I am sending a campaign like the September newsletter and some of my clients have opted for email and other for text, do I have to send a campaign separately for each group? I don't want the people who have chosen either to get both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. So I, I guess it depends on how they have opted for email or text. Like if you've created a landing page and people are tagged one way or the other, then you know if you've got tags that say, oh, send me email or tags that say, send me text, then you would want to probably send those separately because depending on, um, you know, whether you're writing your own campaigns or whether you're using one from the, um, you know, from one of the content providers that we have working with Get Oiling, you know, whether it's Grow Workspace or Oil, Customer Delight or Modern Companion, they usually include their campaigns in two formats. They include it in uh, email format and text format. And um, so you can use that accordingly. So there's also another setting, like if I, I'm just gonna pull up a contact record for me and I'll edit it. And down here is a field called send campaigns by. If this is what you're referring to, uh, then the campaigns do generally follow the setting for email, text, or both. So if you have a campaign, and I'll show you that in a second, if you have a campaign that's set up to send by um, the customer's preference, then they'll get it in whatever medium that they've chosen here. So, so that's basically kind of the high level answer. Like if you're using tags, um, you know, like this tag field to sort people into email and text, you want to send those man, you know, like add, like for example, manually add the campaign um, for email, you know, an email only campaign, manually add that to the people that are tagged with email. And again, manually add a text campaign to those that are marked as text. But the setting I'm referring to here for the campaign, sending that by and following this preference is over here in let's say contact settings and then click on campaigns. And I'll just grab one of these. I'll, I'll click the little pencil icon next to the name, which then I believe takes, yeah, so this is the, um, this is the field that determines whether, what preference it follows. So the preferred sending medium here, you can choose like the default for campaigns, I believe is to use the context preference. So that would follow those checkboxes I was just showing you a minute ago. But then you have the, the choice to prefer or you know, basically force email or text only. So like in the case of email or text preferred, what that does is if they have an email on file, then it will send that to them by email. But if they don't for some reason, it'll send it to them by text. And text is kind of the, it's the opposite. Like if they have a mobile number on file, it will send the campaign by text. If they don't, then it will fall back and send it by email. But then email only and text only, what those do is just, you know, for example, if somebody doesn't have an email address, they're not gonna get that campaign. Or if they don't have a phone number, they're not gonna get that text. So hopefully that helps. Let me know if you have any other questions there. Okay, uh, Carolyn asks, is there a way to accept payments for things through Get Oiling? Uh, yes, through the vaults right now. So I think this test account does have the ability, uh, does have a payment provider connected. So when you're setting up your vault, um, and we do have you know a related item, just sort of a, a wish list item to, um, to be able to make arbitrary purchases, like make a page and have a checkout on it. But right now, the way you can accept payments is through your member area. So when you're setting up your vault, you know, go to my site, click on member area, click on vaults. When you're editing a vault, uh, there's a payment setup tab here. And then you'll want to check the box to require payment to access the vault. And if you want people to go directly to that page, make sure that this setting here is available to um, or just set to this, anyone with a link. And what that does is it will give you a direct link to that, to that vault page where they can pay. It'll pop up a page that has a, this message on it, you know, something probably a little bit nicer than what I've got there, but it pops up this message. I'll, I'll show you this in a minute, um, along with the uh, payment, whatever the payment options are that you have here. And I don't have any pricing plans yet. So what I'll do is I'll click add. Uh, and so here's where you can, choose like you know if it's just like if you're selling an ebook or for example um, or you've got some coaching services or maybe it's a, a an online class that you have in here you can set those you know different types of payment plans uh, up here 
And just to kind of step back a little bit, this works best for um, virtual products, if you will, like online classes, coaching services, um, eBooks, those sort of things. This is, the vault works less well for taking payments. Like if you have a physical product right now, um, it's just easier, better to use like a, I don't know, a Shopify or Square Store or some of those, those cases. But we, you know, again, we have a wish list item on that to hopefully address that at some point in the future. But when you're adding this, the payment plan here, you could just make like, you know, uh, let's say your the ebook, just call it ebook. And it's 40, well, it might be, so let's say it's a $5 ebook and you just say one month. Uh, and then hit add plan. So basically then this will show up where uh, there's a checkout page that has this ebook option. They pay $5 and they get access to your vault. So that's how you would, um, that's how you would take a payment there. Okay, so being you are doing, um, talking about vaults right now, mm -hmm. are, um, there's somebody that asks, are we supposed to use the vaults in place to place the training classes from Grow Workspace or is there some other reason to use the vault? Yeah, I mean, there, there's actually, I mean, you could, that's one option to place some training classes from, you know, Grow Workspace or other, other providers in there. Or, you know, I know Young Living has some content that might be useful in there as well as you could create your own resource pages. That's certainly one option. Um, and it's a very popular one too. So you can have, you know, kind of at a high level, like a, a popular setup um, is to have a, a prospects group, you know, so like you might have something linked off of your blog that says, hey, if you'd like to, you know, join my like-minded like community, click here, and then that will take them to a prospects vault. Maybe you have one also for um, just, you know, your team at, in general, sort of like the product users group where you post, um, you know, maybe you'll go in there and post uh, monthly promos or that sort of thing. And then you could have a, a business builders group. And for those of you in some of the other classes like Go for Gold or and so on those, um, you know, there's there's also a lead group, which is a possibility of going in there. You can also use Facebook for those sort of things. So there's a variety of different um, reasons. Those are kind of, those three examples I gave, or four examples, are kind of Young Living specific. However, uh, you know, the vaults are very flexible. You could, for example, if you had a, a monthly coaching program, you could set that up. Um, you know, I wouldn't put that on the same vault as an ebook, but like I say, I wanted to do, you know, my monthly coaching program. You could just say, okay, this is, I don't know, $50 a month, every month, you know, and then maybe there's an extra $50 fee to join. So there, you know, there's a lot of flexibility there. So uh, it does work really well for service type um, businesses and that, that you might have. So that's, uh, yeah. Let me know if you have any further questions on that one. Um, okay, Susan asks, what is the difference between what Ellie does in her course and what Ashley does in the um, HBR course? Um, offhand, I, I guess I, yeah, wish Ashley were here today that, you know, because she's more familiar with exactly what she did. But I know Ellie's course is about how to build um, a website using some um, graphic tools and how to make the website look really nice. I know HBR is a much more comprehensive course um, and actually covers a number of different topics. So, um, you know, I, Susan, if you want to email in about that, maybe we could figure that in, figure that out a little in more detail for you. Um, if you want to be a little bit more specific, if you could about the um, HBR course about what, you know, specifically what you're looking for in there. I could probably help with that. Oh yeah, go for it. <laughs> I'm still hanging around. Um, what Ashley teaches in HBR, uh, without going into it for those who are not in it, um, is more about um, just how to do the basics for um, for a website, and um, and more of what Ali teaches is how to use Canva images. Um, I haven't taken her course, but I've seen a lot of people who have. Um, she uses Canva images to create custom pages and get oiling and just make it look absolutely gorgeous. Um, so, I mean, they're both really helpful. Um, I think what Ashley teaches is just more about um, how to do the basics uh, without using Canva images. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Yeah, thanks. That's helpful, <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Um, if I am sending a campaign like the September newsletter and some of my clients have opted for email and other for text, 
Do I have to send the campaign separately? Well, I already did that one. Oh, that's oh, a different thing. Okay. Yeah. I think she had a follow-up okay. question, actually. Yep. Oh, okay. Um, okay, Carrie, with regard to customizing our front page of our website through Go for Gold, Ashley showed us how to add our own photo. Can I make it huge so it can cover the whole front page, like your shared healthy living, and not just look like a uh, pick popped on the page? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, in that case, um, you know, it depends on your image. Um, it really depends a lot on your image. I'll show you some some tricks that might be helpful for this. So, like, I'll start from like scratch here. I'm going to create a new custom page that has nothing on it, and I'll just add a one column section. This would be probably how you would want to do that. I'm going to add this one column no header section here and you've got a couple different choices and you want to play you probably want to play around with this to see which one works best depending on your picture but you can either insert a picture here i'll just hopefully there's one in here i'll just grab this one and pretend it's a face and make it as big as it allows you to make it um i don't know you know this this picture probably isn't the best quality or whatever but make it as big as it allows you to make it um higher resolution would be better and if you really want it to be like edge to edge, um, another trick, and I don't, you know, I don't recommend this entirely because it does eliminate your section background controls. But if you're wanting something that's like edge to edge, you can click this delete all button under this more miscellaneous, which then like completely erases the margins and everything. And then if you reinsert the image, it does let you uh, scale it up, I believe, as big as possible. And here's where I would go in and say change size, and you can actually use percentages. So this is a little trick. So if you type 100% in there, it'll make it as big as possible on your device while shrinking it down for mobile. So that might be what you wanna want there. Um, anyway, the other option is, and I'll have to delete this section because once you delete it, it, all the background controls don't work. But so I'll delete this one and I'll add a new one. Let me add another one column, no header. The other option is to use a background image here, which is the section background. I'll um, choose that, oh, here it is. Choose that same image, um, which as you can see, it, it really expands to fill the content. So you'd have to hit enter a bunch of times, um, which is somewhat reliable. This is a little bit trickier on mobile to get that to work, um, but it really depends on your image. If you play around with that a little bit, maybe you can find one of those that'll work for you. Okay, in the upper left hand corner where your name is, can we make that larger? Also, I was playing around with my first blog entry and accidentally sent it out. Can you review how to do a blog and save without publishing to all? Not sure why it went out to my whole mm. entire email list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the upper left hand corner um, where the name is, well, on this site, apparently I've got it customized with a logo. This might be one option for you. I just uploaded a very gigantic Get Oiling logo there. <laughs> that might be an option for those of you who don't know where that's at. I think this is, I don't remember offhand which plans that this is on, but this is under the Customize My Site link. Um, you can choose your site logo if you have large text like this one. That might be a good option for you. I don't know, Carrie, offhand if you have that. Um, if you just have your name there, you know, the text, or if you have a logo, but a logo would probably be a good way to do that. And the other question here is, let's see, so the, the blog post. Um, so when, we're, when you're writing a new blog post, at the very bottom, or kind of towards the bottom, there are these check boxes that say, when this post is published, send it to these contacts by, and then you can choose it by email and or text message, and then you can optionally filter it, like if you wanted to just send to people with a certain tag. So this is useful if you wanna have it, um, you know, for people who are, who have a separate blog subscriber list, you'd want to choose maybe, I don't think this one has it, but you know, if there's a tag called blog or whatever, that's how you'd send it out. To not send it, just leave these boxes unchecked. Um, and of course you can save it to verify it before you publish it, but once you publish it, as long as these two boxes are not checked, it's not gonna go out to anybody. If you, you know, if you do run into any issues, certainly let us know. Okay, so Carrie, um, back to the last question that she asked. 
um, she says, yes, that is what I was asking. Can I put a button on top of a background image? Yes, you can. With background images, you can layer a button on top. Um, let me pop back into the page builder here quick and show you that. I'll create a, a new page with the new blank page with just that one section in here. We'll go through the steps relatively quickly. Set a background image of this. Um, and you do have some options here. I should cover that or mention that too. You do have the option of this cover versus contain thing. Um, as you can see in the background, it's doing different things. It sort of scales it up or stretches it out depending on what you want to do. So that's another setting to play around with. But let's say you want to have a button in the middle here. Um, I'll just press enter a few times, maybe center this thing. This is, um, this is actually something that's relatively new. Maybe I should have covered this earlier. But under this little more rich button, there's now this insert button button which allows you to insert any of your custom buttons that you've made right into the page. So like if I wanna have my button right in the middle, I can, and I'll just click on that to edit it, to you know make it something, do something, whatever. You know, you can update it to change it to be whatever that you want. Um, so yeah, you can, you can totally overlay it. This is a really good use for a background image. If the background image, um, where people typically run into trouble with that is if there's text that's like really critical to understanding what's going on with the page. But if you just have like a general background image that doesn't matter how it's cropped, if it's part of it's uh, cut off or whatever, then it doesn't matter so much. Um, so it's really goes to a lot of the choice of the background colors. Okay, Dana asks, um, it's the opt-in field. So this is kind of going back to her um, sending in a campaign mm -hmm. message, both of them. If they have chosen both, I don't want them to get two versions. So what if they have chosen both email and text? Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's, you can um, prefer that. If you choose one of the preferred options, yeah, I guess to go back to your original question, if you're wanting to avoid people that have, or sending to, to you know, both an email and a text to a person, um, you know, either of course the you have to make sure those settings aren't chosen, which is kind of difficult to maintain. Or you could probably make the, you know, send that in two batches for those that you know that are one way or the other. There isn't currently a setting that, um, you know, the, the, oops, yeah, so if I come into here, there is a use the context preference, but these are, these other four are essentially your preference. So like if you say email only, then it will email it out first, even if, um, you know, even if they are choosing one or the other. So anyway, yeah, there's, you'd have to probably send that out separately. Um, but I can, that is something that we could look into a little bit more in support. If you want to um, connect with us, maybe we can dig into your specific account and look around a little bit and, and see what we could do. Um, so yeah, I don't know. We'll give that a try. Okay. Okay, um, the complication is some have email, some have text, and some have both. Um, so yeah, so Dana, just go ahead and um, message in to um, support at getoiling.com and we can try to help you um, navigate that. Uh, okay, Carrie, can I send part of a long paragraph in my newsletter and then have the reader click read more and send them somewhere else in Get Oiling to read the rest? Is that how I could use the blog? Can you review how to do this? Yes, that's actually a really uh, great idea to drive clicks and engagement on your emails, which of course, that also in turn um, improves the delivery. Um, because as people, or as email providers see you clicking on links in there, that'll improve um, your emails getting through. So what I'll do here, I'll just search for my contact and I'll pretend I'm sending myself a newsletter Okay, I've got two of me selected. So I'll, I'll just come up to actions and click click mail. And I'll use one of these save replies that we have built in. I think there's like um, this blank newsletter template. And so I think this actually demonstrates what you're talking about here. Like I wanna have a, uh, you know, a bit about some specific topic, this long paragraph or a part of a long paragraph and then a read more button. So what you wanna do first before you, um, create the actual, well, I mean, I suppose you could create the newsletter first, but you have to save this maybe as a draft or a save reply and come back later. Um, but let's say, uh, I'll just pop open a new tab here. And let's say you wanted to put that on a blog, which is, you know, a fantastic place to put that. You could also make it a custom page if it's like secret information, if it's just, you know, uh, information that you want to share perhaps with your 
your business builders and not others. And um, so you'd want to create a blog post or a page first. And then once you have that, uh, I'll just give an example. Let's see, one of these is published. That's sort of a normal one. So I'll, uh, I'll click view post and I'll just copy this link. And then so what you do, once you have that blog post, you write up your little summary, give them a reason to click. Uh, and then you just come in here and replace this URL with whatever your, whatever it is there. And then now that link, whenever that's sent, that's going to go to that blog post. So yeah, you can totally do that. That's a, it's a great way to keep the newsletter short so people don't have to scroll and scroll and scroll. Um, you just have your little sort of sections that link off to when they want more information. So something to play around with, certainly, if that works for you know, who you've got on your email list. Uh, sometimes that works really, really well. Krista asks, so if I have a course and a coaching service, then I would create two vaults for different payment service options, right? Uh, possibly. I guess it depends on, you know, if the course comes with your coaching services, it could be one vault. If they're completely separate things, then yeah, that would probably be two vaults. Now you can, because of the nature of the, the pricing plans, you can add multiple plans to a specific vault. Like if I go back over to this one here and go to my payment setup tab, and if I add a pricing plan, I could add one that's just for my course. And let's say the course is, I don't know, $100 or something. Add plan. You can also then, you know, depend, and you have to watch for this as the payments come through, but you could also add um, plus my coaching. Um, so you could add multiple plans and people would see that on there. And, you know, obviously it'd probably be, maybe that's a recurring payment situation where, you know, whatever your monthly program is, if, if it's a monthly program, for example, or if it's a one-time service, you could just basically, you can set up multiple plans and people can choose. One of them could be like a bundle with some of your coaching. I've seen that done. Like you can get, um, here's my class. If you want an hour with me, you can add that on right now. And then later on, there's ways of, you know, you can send them an invoice or whatever if they want or, or go through, you know, acuity or whatever to, to collect more payments if they want to schedule more time in the future. But that's one way of bundling that into one purchase. Okay. Um, Jean asks, I know you just talked about vaults, but could you give me an example of how many vaults most people have and how they are constructed or used? Um, we certainly can. I mean, the, the quick overview of the, I think probably five or six types that I'm aware or that I'm, I'm aware of that are most popular. Um, is so there, you can have a vault for prospects, new prospects, have another vault for, um, your team, you know, your Young Living team, all the product users, another vault for business builders. And another possibility would be, you know, of a lead group if you're in one of these, um, and of course, like Go for Gold, uh, I think there's also a lead group option there that you could have in there. Um, and then if, if you get into like selling an online course that's unrelated to anything, anything else that you're doing or coaching services, those might be the, the five in general. Now, in terms of like what to, um, you know, this would be a good thing. If you go to our YouTube channel, um, youtube.com slash get oiling and search for, um, I can show you that here quickly. There's a little, we have done a few of these uh, trainings. So uh, if you just click this little search button and search for member area, there are a whole bunch of different uh, results. I think community, whoops, community is another keyword. Uh, that will show up. And we do go a, a deep dive into the strategy on these. So here's another good, really good uh, training that we did that was basically all about the member area. And, um, but basically the, the general recommendation that we have is the, the prospecting ty uh, type groups, like if they're new prospects um, or lead groups, those sort of things, those, um, those generally would be, you know, those might be more effective on a social media platform like Facebook because people are there and it's just something that you want to, you know, get in front of them. Whereas the member area, it takes a little more intention to get to, even though you can send emails to them to drive people there. Uh, oftentimes the lead groups or the prospect groups tend to work a little bit better um, or can be more effective on Facebook. And that's something that you'd have to try um, with your audience too. So, I mean, if you have a bunch of people who aren't on Facebook, then this would be fantastic for that. 
Um, but if your you know, main people that you're working with that you're trying to get leads from is on say Facebook or LinkedIn, I think has groups now too, a variety of different places. So those are probably the most common that I'm aware of. Um, typically people will have, you know, I, I, you know our, our basic plan does have uh, one vault. You can add on more. If you don't want to upgrade, you can just email us and we can help you add that on. Um, but usually people settle with somewhere between maybe one and three um, vaults. Sometimes if they've got additional classes, that's where all the, these extra vaults come in. So hopefully that, hopefully that helps there. Okay, Dana asks, any update on a new gallery style format for the blogs? Uh, not at the current moment. I think that's still on our, our wish list. We did recently, um, I'll cover this quickly too. We did recently add some extra blog post settings for personalization, which can, which can help. So under blog post settings now, there's this personalization option section, which allows you to put a header on the top of every page. As you can see, um, like if I go over to my site here, and I think I added a blog link earlier, how convenient. You can see this image that I have chosen here um, shows up here. So you can personalize this, you can put a nice header on there. It's more than just an image uh, because it's an editor, you can actually put links, text, buttons, all that stuff in here. If you wanna have a call to action at the top, you can put in a, insert a button in the page. Um, you can put in lines, you can put in files, you can, whatever you want to. So the, kind of the sky's the limit there. There's also a page footer that you can see. So like if I go back over to here and scroll to the very bottom, you can see the page footer shows up there. So it's a great way to wrap that up. You can even put a um, post footer on the, or a footer on the bottom of every post. Like this is a, a good example of a call to action, you know, to join my community, like-minded people click here, and then it takes them to, so your lead group, whether it's Facebook or in your member area or whatever. So, um, and then there's some extra sidebar content that you can put over there as well. But right now the, um, whatever the, you call that the gallery the photo view is not available, but it is on our wish list. So. Awesome. Okay. Can we still connect to get oiling to PayPal? Uh, not through the vaults, but there is an option uh, kind of under, under the events, the event manager does have the option. Like if I just, I'm just going to click on one of these here. Oops. I got to, I think edit the event. There is an option here to have some payments code that does integrate with PayPal. And there's some instructions on how to do that. You can add a buy now button. Um, for PayPal for events, but it's not through, we don't have PayPal through uh, the vault right now. Okay, so Carrie um, is back to that background image question. Um, can the button on top of the background image be moved to different areas on the pick? Also, I have, I want to be, if I wanted it to be placed in order, can I use your get oiling presets on uh, preset one somehow? Um, yeah, those are, those are good questions. So the, going back to the page builder here, let me recreate that page here quickly. Do the blank page with a background image and a button on it. The, um, I'll just center this, insert a button, and I'll put a background image in here as well. So, okay, so I think this is what you're talking about. And there's really, uh, because the background image and the button are sort of floating on top of each other, and as your screen size changes, you can see the positioning of the button with, you know, in relation to the graphic changes. So there's really no way to like anchor the button to a specific part of the image. Now you can play around with it a little bit more um, to maybe do a little bit more anchoring, you know, like you can choose the background position and the vertical background position um, to maybe try to make it a little bit better. Like I put those most in the center. And so now it looks like it mostly stays in the same spot. So there's some things you can play around with on that. Um, so that's probably, I don't know, the best. Best response I can think of there was that the, let's see, did I get the whole question there? Oh, the place in order one, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's say you want this button to be placed in order. Uh, I believe that there's a, um, I don't do it. let me start over with a new section here with the, uh, if you wanna do a place in order button, I will insert a button. 
and whoops, I must not have clicked on it. So, so there is a way, it keeps doing that here. So, I'll, but anyway, I think you can type, um, there is a tag here. Let me see if this works. This should work. Sign up link. You don't have to remember this specific code because there's another way of getting this. But like if I hit, if I hit update, um, that should turn it into a link. The other option is to, and I don't have that in the menu. Let me go back out here to the uh, menu somehow. If I'm, I need to add the, well, let me actually, let me just go to a, a built-in website thing. Oops, not boy, body systems. So like if I come over here, there should be a, make this a little bit wider. So your built-in site comes with this place in order link. So if you have one of these on your site, probably the easiest thing to do is just to right click on it and copy the link address and paste it in on your button. Now, what do we have next here? Okay. Um, is there a limit on how much you can put in a vault? Um, on, on, on the basic plan, there are some limits around how many pages you can have in your system. And yes, there would be some limits on basic. Um, and there's some limits on the number of classes that you can have. I think um, you know the those limits. If you go to getorlingcom slash pricing or just click on the pricing link, um, there's another. You can see like there's a limit. Where is it at here? Um, the yeah, the website builder. So like on basic, you get up to ten pages, whereas on premium, we have unlimited pages. There's limits on the vaults and the classes, but there are a lot of uh, places where there are no limits. So like you can have as much content as you want. Um, within your plan. So you can have as many discussion rooms as you would like. So like if you, you know, if you add content, uh, if you eventually run out of pages in your plan, then, you know, you either have to upgrade or, uh, you know, rearrange your content somehow. But if you have, if you're on premium, for example, you can have as many pages as you want to. You can have as many discussion rooms as you want to on any of the plans. And then the number of online classes that you have really depends on what plan that you're on because uh, like I think basic has one and premium has five if you want to add or so within a class though let me go back to my member area here when you're editing a class uh, the, you can add as many lessons as you would like so uh, there are no limits on that you can add a, you can have a, a less or a class that's got 100 lessons in it if you want to so um, we've seen people have um, there was one person who had I think 200 and some pages in her member area um, you know, as well, uh, yeah, so it's quite sophisticated, so there's not a ton of limits there, um, but there are some limits based on certain plan features. Okay, Juliet asks, do you have checklists of the steps that we need to take to do all the things, create a homepage, create a campaign from start to finish, create blogs, create vaults, and so on? something that we can easily check off the steps as we do the actions. I love the videos, but have a quick, but having a quick checklist to go along with them would be amazing and easy after you watch the video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't think we have um, checklists maybe in that format. We certainly do have a lot of um, help resources and we've been working on getting more videos in there. Like I think is the member area is that one where we know it was a uh, homepage, I think customizing, mm -hmm. no, there's one of these menu, or one of these, um, the custom pages, custom page builder, I think we added a video training in here too. So we've been, you know, working on improving the help center um, to get more information in there, but um, checklists are a great idea. We'll add that to our, we'll think about that a little bit. Uh, my current lead group is in Facebook. When I do a call to action to join my community, should it take them straight to my Facebook group or should it take them to a landing page on which they must register in order to be directed to my Facebook lead group? Which option is better? Uh, I would say the, the option that has the least friction for them, especially as a lead group, um, you know, if it's just a lead, mm -hmm. which would be then taking them right to Facebook because typically you can just click, click, click to get in. If you want to, you know, I know the Facebook um, lead or the Facebook groups have the option of um, say like requiring an email address or requiring questions, one of which could be maybe an email address before they get in. 
you can totally do that if you want to there. That might integrate that a little bit better. The downside with that, I guess, is you'd have to go manually put them into, into Git or Link because there's no automation between the two. But in terms of leads, I think like the lower the friction, the better to get into the group. And then, um, however, if you want, you know, you could certainly experiment with it. That's what I usually tell people, like play around with it, see what works. You know, if you've got, if you have a, you know, known pace of leads coming in, or you're not getting any at all or whatever, play around with one or both options. Cause another option would be like, like what you had said with the landing page, you could set up the landing page first for their contact information, which then sends them to the Facebook group. And maybe the Facebook group doesn't have any questions on it at that point. So um, you can play around with that and see maybe what works best for you. But personally as a, you know, thinking, putting me on my lead hat, uh, the lower the friction, the better, at least initially until they're more familiar with you. Uh, and then, you know, but inside your lead group is where you'd be dripping on them about, um, other offers that could potentially then get them to uh, enter in their information on a landing page. Um, Jean asked, can a picture itself be linked to something without a button visible, which I'm assuming we're talking about Carrie's question for that page. Yeah, you, uh, you can't link a background image, but you can link a foreground image essentially. So like if I click this insert image button and I'll pick, I'll pick something here. Uh, I'll put this little megaphone there. After you've clicked on an image, there is a button that allows, allows you to insert a link on it. So yeah, you can you can do that. Um, you can put a link on here. You gotta include the HTTP in front of it, but let's say we could do link that to get oiling. Um, and then if you send that out by email or if that's on your web page, then that's um, that's what you would, you know, you can ba basically link an image. And this is actually a, a trick that some people used if they've got like, very stylized buttons that maybe are very graphic and artistic. This is a great way to simulate a button by just having a, you know, you make your button and if you're using Photoshop or Canva or whatever, make your button, upload it in here, and then you can essentially add a link to it. Okay, Carrie asks, I have a basic plan, pretty sure I can only have one vault. Can I create options inside the one vault and have several rooms for one prospect two team and three business builders? Not, I mean, you can't keep them out of the different areas um, because within the vault, if you get access to the vault, you have access to everything. Now you could try that and see if that would work. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't probably recommend putting prospects in there. Maybe that's where, you know, on the basic plan, if you know, and again, we do have an add-on if you wanna, um, I don't remember the pricing, if you'd email us. Um, if you want to add on an extra vault to your basic plan, you can do that without upgrading and it's less than the cost of upgrading. But you can, um, you could say, for example, mix your team and your business builders, like, you know, you sprinkle information into these different spots. Like maybe you have a discussion room for your team and a discussion room for business builders. Maybe that would pique the curiosity of your team members. Like, hey, what is this business builder thing? They can go over there and click on it. So that actually might be a something worth playing around with to see if that, um, that might work for you. So the prospects probably would be separate because um, you want them to be, you know, in, in in committed a little bit more than just, you know, an email address to get into your, your list or clicking in their Facebook group, at least in my opinion. So cool. Okay. So one last question here, um, which kind of from um, Judy in the chat, um, my emails have my home address at the bottom. Please help. I know we kind of went through that at the beginning. Um, do you want to kind of mm -hmm. go through that one more time for her? Yeah, I'll cover that again. Um, depending on the plan that you have, you may be able to customize it. So generally where that comes from, there is a um, US law called can spam that requires a valid mailing address on all marketing emails. And that because the valid mailing address is more than just city state, unless I guess you live in a town of one or something. I don't know, maybe that's valid <laughs> or a very super small town. I remember some of the small towns are kind of like that. Oh, they know where this person is. But as long as it's a valid mailing address, um, that's what they require. Now, I mean, it, where that comes from is if you click on your name in the upper right hand corner, uh, that does come from your street address field. So it uses street address, city, state, zip. Whatever you put in here is gonna show on the bottom of your, bottom of your emails. Um, of course, there's a risk of fines if you don't have your, your street address in there. Um, so, you know, we recommend uh, like a PO box or something like that, but it's definitely, um, you know, you can choose to put whatever you want to in there. I guess it's, you know, the, the guideline is that it's going to be a, um, has to be a, a mailing, a valid mailing address for you specifically. Um, 
if you have a, uh, if you're on the premium or higher plan or have that little customization add on under the customize my site link, there's advanced settings. And then you can also change your email footer here and put what you want to in there, which we do recommend, of course, the um, mailing address too. Cool. I think, is there anything? That is, looks, yep, I think we are. Oh, okay. um, are you saying any email coming out from Get Orling requires a mailing address? Uh, it's, it's really kind of a marketing email requirement. If you want to read up on it, go, come to this. Um, well, I can put this in the chat too for those that are, those that are here. This is the guideline, um, you know, published by what I think is the FTC uh, about that. So essentially, yeah, they do want some sort of mailing address on there in order to remain, um, you know, to not run the risk of fines, essentially. So, yeah, so hopefully that helps. I mean, that's, um, cool. yeah, I think that's it. Well, thanks everyone. Um, it was yeah. awesome. Thanks for joining us today. I think everyone else looks like they have uh, disappeared and gone there on their separate ways. So, yeah, thank <laughs> you for joining us. <laughs> All right, thanks guys. Have a great rest of your week. Take care.